Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. You'll have to forgive the lack of in-game audio during this launch, but there will be audio during the main event. I was launching this while listening to the SpaceX launch of Axiom 1 earlier today, and that is why there's this little black rectangle in the bottom right corner of the screen. That was where the little video was during my live stream while I was doing this mission and so we were watching that at the same time during the live stream. But this is the launch of a Keyhole 9 satellite into polar orbit from Vandenberg. And our goal is to launch a shuttle to it to replenish its film return capsules. There are four capsules at the bottom you see there, the ones with the black stripe and white top. Those are film return capsules. This is a spy satellite. This is probably, I think, the last spy satellite to use film return capsules because after that they just transmitted their photos because the bandwidth was high enough to get good photos transmitted directly from orbit. Uh, but the goal here, this never happened because the shuttle never launched from Vandenberg and I don't think there was any intention of servicing a Keyhole 9 satellite with the shuttle, uh, but that might have been top secret anyway. But uh, the timing was just about right. The Keyhole 9 satellite was used right when the shuttle entered service. So it was possible for them to overlap. So that's why I thought of this mission as a possible mission out of Vandenberg into polar orbit for the shuttle. But the shuttle never launched into polar orbit and never launched from Vandenberg, even though uh, preparations were made so that it could do so. Here I am getting rid of the film return capsules that came with the satellite using their little SRBs to deorbit them. And then we launched a shuttle with new film return capsules that will be docked to the satellite so that it can continue its work. They were pretty expensive satellites. In current dollar terms, they are about 750 million to a billion dollars a piece. So it would be worth launching the shuttle to them to replenish their supply of film return capsules if that meant that we didn't have to launch a new one. They are rather complicated satellites as well, if that was even possible to put the little pods in and have them, you know, feed the film into those pods, it's, uh, I don't know. But anyway, here goes the Shuttle Endeavor. I decided to use the Shuttle Endeavor even though it wouldn't have been ready at this time uh, because the SpaceX mission, the Axiom 1 mission, uh, was Endeavor. And so I decided to call my stream a tale of two endeavors. So, yeah. Anyway, you can see Polar Orbit. We are over, I think that's South Pole. And we are making orbit there. And so the script finishes, and I am now in control. And the thing is, we are pretty tight on fuel for this. And actually, we didn't get into quite the inclination I wanted. So the correction burn here is a little bit more than I sort of bargained for. And that's going to come to bite us in the end. But, uh, well, well, we'll do a good enough job, but you'll see. Anyway, so rendezvous burn taking a little bit more fuel than I would have liked. But we do get there. Here we are matching orbits with the target. You can see the target indicator on the nav ball there. And here we are approaching the fairly large Keyhole 9 satellite, though there are larger satellites in existence. It is a uh, unique shape too. I sort of fancied it overall, especially the fact that it had five drop pods altogether. It has a small one on the nose that we're not replacing. Uh, we're just doing the four big ones. And we are using tugs because, unfortunately, first of all, the canned arm doesn't seem to work for me right now. I tried. I used to be able to use it, but for some reason, Infernal Robotics here is not letting me use it properly. So we're using these tugs to grab on. Technically, the Keel 9 satellite's own fuel is still there, and I could just use it to keep it stable or maneuver it as necessary. But I tossed two tugs over to get a more defined definitive grip on it as if we were using a canned arm if you will and also to roll it around here so that those uh, empty slots will be facing us and then another tug to grab the the satellites if this was actually going to be done it would be astronauts putting the satellites in I'm sure uh, the satellite uh, the little return capsule probe whatever you want to call them uh, those things recovery containers They'll, the astronauts would just sort of maneuver them in while the arm held the satellite close by, just like they serviced Hubble or something like that. 
Hubble is actually a spare spy satellite. It was a Keyhole 11. This is a Keyhole 9 we're seeing right now, but uh, Hubble was a Keyhole 11 satellite. So, a successor to this one. Okay, so now we're getting the second one of these out. I had previously tried this mission, but I hit a snag because the little docking ports that we're using to attach the probes back in there uh, were too deep into the collider of the satellite. So the satellite model has a collider in it for physics, and they were too deep in so I couldn't get a connection between the two docking ports. I actually made these custom docking ports, these very thin docking ports for this purpose. So anyway, but we got them placed properly now so that they're not interfered with with the collider. Another problem I had previously had was when undocking the probes from the cargo bay, you know, when the tugs have a uh, hold on them, but we need to separate them from the shuttle, they would pop out very forcefully. And you can actually see the tug firing its thrusters in the opposite direction to slow it down because even now it pops out there rather forcefully. So we have to be careful about that. Anyway, it's a delicate procedure because we have to slot them in just right. And we also have to make sure that the satellite and the shuttle do not collide. They're still drifting with respect to one another. You know, they're somewhat station keeping, but it's not precise or anything like that. So they're always drifting. And so we have to keep correcting that. Anyway, off goes the last one. You can see there was a little bit of an impulse to it still. But it wasn't as bad as on previous attempts. The main struggle, of course, is getting the shuttle back in one piece. I previously had a video where I did a test and that didn't work out very well. Uh, hopefully this time it will be better, but we are about to find out. So, all the tugs have to go back into the shuttle because we're not just dumping them. It'd be easier to dump them, but we are going to retrieve all of them. We will purge them of fuel though. They do not have the same fuel mixture as the shuttle does. Uh, the shuttle also uses MMH, but not the NTO, so it'd be an imbalance of fuels there. Okay, so that one's in. The other two are the ones holding on to the Keyhole 9 satellite. And here I am just making sure it doesn't drift too far away because I didn't want it outside of render range just yet. And they go back in. All this business took more than one orbit. And here it is coming towards the shuttle. Nice views, of course. Always nice to work with the shuttle. Approaching the dock. And that leaves one more. Of course, if I could use Canada Arm, that would have actually been sort of easier, uh, in a way. If I could use two or three at Canada Arms, that would have been even better. But, uh, yeah. Uh, we could have had the satellite station keep and then use Canada Arm to put the new film return capsules into it. But, yeah, the arm didn't work. So there were many ways of doing this without the little, what I call Canada tugs. I originally created them to assist in station building, but because the arms didn't work, I couldn't do that. Anyway, here I am trying to figure out exactly the timing for return. And I figured out that I would, we would end up one degree too far east, one degree longitude too far east if we came back on this go round. I decided that that was acceptable and that the re-entry script should be able to handle that by turning. Uh, so we went ahead with it, and here I am starting the shell re-entry script that I have used before and hoping that it can get us back to Edwards Air Force Base properly. I do have a custom scenery for Edwards Air Force Base that I created. It's just a flat plane. Well, it's actually a sort of a plateau that I created. Uh, it's mostly flat, and I just sort of plopped the image of Edwards Air Force Base on top of it. So it's a little bit haphazard. But anyway, here we are uh, coming in a little bit. And I think we will bounce up at this point. Yeah, you can see that we're at uh, almost 84 kilometers. So it got some lift, but here it's also turning. Uh, I said we would be one degree too far east. You can see it's turning to the right, which would be west coming in because we're headed south and continuing to do so, taking advantage of the fact that we're going slightly long at this point. And yeah, the problem is we're running out of fuel. And this is where the fact that we had too much inclination after launch hurts us because we will end up running out of fuel just, 
just too early. But anyway, spoilers, uh, here it is, continuing its descent. And unfortunately the Delta V's in the bottom left aren't going to tell the truth in this case. What we need to look out for is the MMH and Mon3 in the resource panel, and the MMH is going to run out first. Here we are at 60 kilometers coming in. We we're very much on track here, and I was very pleased by how it was going. Um, it corrected a little bit of longitudinal difference, not much, one degree is very little, but at least it seemed to be doing it. But here we are about to run out of MMH uh, at about 40 kilometers here. And there you just saw the little patch of Edwards Air Force Base appear down there. That little square there is Edwards Air Force Base. So I was delighted by that, but then we ran out of fuel and our yaw control is maxed out, you can see in the bottom left. And that is because the vertical stabilizer is still shadowed by the body of the shuttle. Uh, so while our other aerodynamic surfaces are working, the vertical stabilizer and the rudder are not. We have to pitch down first so that those could work, and the pitch down occurs at a lower altitude than where we had it. Well, this is the dramatic part, so I will offer you the original audio from the live stream as I try to salvage this situation. It's right there. Edwards is right there. It worked. Darn it. <laughs> the script worked. Let me land. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, okay, but oh, no, stay there, stay there, stay there, okay. Good. Now, we don't have a whole lot of room here. <laughs> we need to slow down quite a lot. Um, I don't think I can do a second approach to it. Uh, we're high and fast. Uh, and the air brakes don't work very well. Oh, and let's go for that one. It's leveler. Oh, oh shoot, oh shoot. Back up here. Back up here. Clench teeth and everything. Okay, oh gosh, control is wacky. Uh, fine. Yes, there. Ah, uh, okay, break. Uh, <laughs> skidding, skidding, skidding. This is not ideal. Well, not gentle. So yes, obviously not how I wanted to end the mission, but really very close. We just needed to keep a little bit of RCS fuel for a little while longer, maybe until we got to 30 kilometers. Just a minute more would have done the trick. Incidentally, the air brakes on the rudder uh, do deploy, but they don't actually seem to create any additional drag. So they don't operate as brakes, if you were wondering about that. But yeah, managed to bring it down at least. Uh, not the most elegant way of doing it, but Still, it was very nice to come back to Edwards somehow. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.